Hello everyone, my name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be talking about medical play. Yes, that is right. We are back with another 101 video and I think this one is going to be really interesting because of all of the different types of play I have covered in 101 videos before from bondage to pet play to service submission. I really feel like this one is the most divisive, not because it's controversial, but because people tend to have very disparate opinions about it. It tends to be something that either people love or they hate. It is either something that they want to do every single time or it is a total hard limit. And I kind of want to explore a little bit about why that is and just talk about medical play in general, why people are into it, different forms of medical play, and how you can get started in trying it out for yourself if that does interest you. So let us start off as usual with a definition. Now actually for medical play, it's difficult to come up with just one set definition because what I discovered through my research for this video as well as my own experience with it, there tends to be sort of like two camps of how you think about medical play. So there's medical play vis-a-vis -vis role play and then there's medical play vis-a-vis -vis like technique and skill that's being used. So let's talk about that first one, which is medical play as role play. I think when people think of medical play, if they're not otherwise familiar with it, this is probably what their brain naturally goes towards. So this is like the sexy nurse costume, the hot doctor, the evil dentist, those sorts of things where it's, it's very role play focused. It's more about the feeling of a scene, so things like, you know, the smell of latex gloves, the feeling of the cold table, the smell of the sanitary wash that they use, all those sorts of things kind of going together to create a very medical feeling sort of environment. This is very commonly associated with scenes that involve things like examinations or having a checkup. So it's very much more about creating the feeling of a medical environment, playing with having a sense of, you know, having a doctor or a nurse or whoever, and then typically a patient. However, that's not necessarily how it always has to go. I think, again, most commonly, it's going to be medical professional as the top, and then the bottom is typically a patient. However, you could have a medical play scene that involves both parties being in a medical role. So for example, like a senior nurse and a junior nurse, or it could also be that the patient is actually the one who's the top and it's sort of a situation where you are flipping the script for the scene. Now, the other type of medical play that I think is a little bit less commonly understood is medical play as a skill or tool based thing. So this is more about using what would typically be in a medical setting or is considered like a medical procedure as part of play. So this would be things like catheters, sounding, drawing blood, suturing, skin stapling, something where again, you're using kind of the tools of something that's medically related in a BDSM context. Now, in comparison to seeing it as a form of role play, the only sort of medical element you might have to a scene is that one tool. So for example, you might be doing a needle scene, which you know falls under the umbrella of medical play, but it's not otherwise trying to evoke the sense of like being in a doctor's office, for example. Now, this is not to say that these are like two totally disparate worlds that don't ever cross. I think depending on how you choose to have a medical play scene, you will combine these in different ways. So for some people, it's totally 100% role play and there's no tools or skills involved at all. Other people is 100% totally just the skills and they're not trying to feel like a doctor patient thing is happening at all, for example. And other people is somewhere in the middle, or maybe it leans a little bit one way or the other. Point being, those are the two broadest ways you can think about medical play. And then within that, there are many, many different types of scene and things you can choose to do. Now, at this point of the video, you might be going, Evie, why in the world would somebody want to have a catheter or an enema as part of a scene? I thought BDSM was about fun. Those do not sound fun. 
I do not understand this. And you're allowed to have that opinion. You are totally allowed to think that with any kink. You know, we all have our likes and our dislikes, but maybe I can help you understand a little bit better if it's not making sense to you why somebody might be into this. Now, the first one, the elephant in the room is sex. Yes, a lot of people are into medical play because it is sexually arousing for them. They oftentimes will have a fetish for it. Medical play is one of those areas of BDSM, like latex, that is very strongly associated with fetishism. So there are people who are really sexually into the idea of getting casts or enemas or braces, and that is how they fulfill that particular sexual fetish. Now, I don't have the time in this video to explain what fetishes are or how people develop them or all the other stuff. I've talked about that in other videos, so links to that will be down below. But suffice to say, some people are just into this because it makes them hot for whatever reason and they get off to it and it's part of something that's sexual for them. For some people, just doing the medical stuff itself is the sexual aspect of it. Other people mix in more overtly sexual acts into their medical play scenes. So that would be things like, for example, prostate massage. You might also see people have like their hysteria treated with vibrators, or some people enjoy the aspect of role play where they're actually being like masturbated by a medical professional, you know, air quotes, role play scenario, obviously. So there are people who are into this sexually, but it's not the only reason why somebody might choose to engage in medical play. The next biggest reason is probably power exchange. When we are kids, some of the first people we are taught to just trust inherently, besides their parents, were probably doctors and nurses. They're really smart, they're really well educated, they can probably use a lot of big words, you have no idea what they even mean, and so for a lot of us, we might be attracted to the possibility of playing with an element of power that a medical professional might have over us. And there's a lot of forms that that can take. So for example, there is obviously the very stereotypical, like, you know, doctor knows best, you have to follow doctor's orders. You might also be in a situation where the doctor has control over you due uh, to other factors, you know, such as the inherent vulnerability of being sick and having to listen to other people and be sort of at the mercy of other people to take care of us. Also being subjected to invasive medical procedures, exams, or tests might be really invasive and feel like we don't have any control over our own bodies. It can make somebody feel helpless. It might even be humiliating for somebody to forcibly be undressed or having to wear a really embarrassing, ugly frock instead of their usual clothing. Now, a conversation about medical play would not be complete if I didn't also mention pain. Anybody who has been to the dentist or has had a painful medical procedure knows that medical professionals basically have unlimited tools of torture at their disposal, anything from TENS units, to ice cold speculums, to all sorts of different pokey and prodi devices. There are so many ways that you can use pain as a tool in a medical play scenario. And actually, you don't even really need tools because if you know anything about pressure points or twisting the skin or pinching or poking, it's really easy to go, does that hurt? Does that hurt? Does this hurt? And just like, twist and you know there's all sorts of good things in there like if you're into cbt for example having it be in sort of a medical framework is a really common way that people choose to play with that so pain is absolutely a motivator for a lot of people who are into this and hey actually if you have a masochist in your life and they're getting kind of bored with like the same old flogging adding a little bit of maybe a medical element to it can change it up and maybe have a little bit of a different way of meeting their pain needs. Now, again, I don't really have time in this video to explain why some people are into pain or why that's a good thing. So if you haven't seen my video talking about masochism before, I recommend you check it out. Again, link to that will be down in the description box below. As you can tell already, just from what I've mentioned so far, the world of medical play is vast. There are so many different ways to approach it. There's so many different things you can do with it. And any one thing I've mentioned so far, again, you know, sounding, enemas, catheters, prostate massage, all of that can be its whole own subject all on its own. So it's definitely something that I think is worth researching more. Now, if you are listening to this, if you're kind of curious about medical play and you want to start trying it for yourself, I'm gonna go ahead here and give some suggestions for some things you might try depending on what the nature of the interest you have is. Now, 
If you're interested in medical play from a role play perspective, I think the absolute classic, the best thing to start with is just, you know, a classic medical exam. You don't really need any fancy equipment for this. You don't need anything special. You can get, you know, dressing gowns and all sorts of things from Amazon. You can get medical scrubs from Amazon also for like 20 bucks. All you maybe need after that is like some exam gloves. Maybe you want to get a little name tag or a stethoscope. Also, those can be really cheap, easily found, you know, in costume stores even if it happens to be near Halloween where you live. And besides that, all you really need is maybe like a table or a chair. And if you want to make sure you're giving it kind of more of a separate feel from like an everyday piece of furniture, just covering it up with like a drop cloth or even a really big plastic sheet can add to that medical feel. And you don't have to go out and buy any sort of expensive furniture. From there, you can take your role play in a lot of different directions. It could be, again, a very classic, you know, nurse or doctor giving an exam to a patient. You could also do things maybe more in sort of a psych ward type of direction. Don't feel like you have to limit yourself. You could do like a physical therapist office. If you're into pet play, it could be like a veterinary thing if you want to mix in some different kinks in there. You could even have it be a freaking alien abduction thing if you wanted to, which again is its whole whole other subject, but is very, very commonly related to medical play. So there's lots of role play possibilities and all you need is some very simple tools to get started. I think when it comes to developing a medical role play type of scene, if that's what you're going for, it's really about engaging the senses. You know, if you have a CD player still, if you have a laptop, get some good old fashioned waiting room music. Uh, you can get bottles of the sorts of cleaners they use in hospitals or in exam rooms quite cheaply, also on Amazon. I feel like I'm recommending Amazon a lot in this video, but it's very convenient and usually a lot easier than trying to find something out in the real world. Again, exam gloves are super cheap, but just the sound of hearing them snap on can be quite effective. If you want to have a little bit more separation from your everyday persona, having on a face mask can be really simple as well. And you can pick those up at Walgreens for like two dollars for like a box of ten so you know you might as well it's pretty cheap and compared to a lot of other types of play it is something that actually doesn't necessarily require a lot of upfront cost to get started with now if you are interested in medical play from a pain perspective i think there you can start with some really lower level forms things that are a little bit more like sensation play things like Wartenberg wheels, for example, are quite common, are originally a medical device. You can also use those little like rubber hammers for testing reflexes, which I'm sure if you use them on other places besides what they are intended for, could be used to quite a good effect with impact play. You can also do other things like, for example, Jennings gags, which were originally a dental device, if you wanna go more in that direction. Speaking of which, Bondage is a huge part of medical play for a lot of people. There are like white and brown hospital restraints. There are straight jackets. There's like those gynecological tables that like forcibly spread your legs apart. Those are really popular. Now with the exception of maybe getting some white and brown restraints, getting your hands on those other things can be difficult and or expensive. However, what I have noticed is a lot of dungeons will have used pieces of medical furniture in them because they're cheap and they're easy to find on Amazon from like old doctor's offices. So chances are you might be able to go to a local dungeon and try their exam table, try their gynecological table. There's a lot of options when it comes to that. And so I think this is a good chance to really utilize your local community, go out and see what they have and use that as a way to explore something that you might be interested in. Humiliation is also a huge part of medical play. I think that when it comes to types of humiliation, medical play is fairly straightforward because it's something that a lot of us already have a script in our heads about. So for example, we all know how embarrassing it can feel to completely undress before a doctor gives us an exam. You can play on that. You can play on maybe the doctor, you know, heckling you a little bit because you're not taking good enough care of your body. You can also play on the fact that, you know, you don't really have control, you know, air quotes, because consent and negotiation over this person who is touching and poking and prodding all of your intimate parts and maybe making, you know, some hurtful comments and 
sensual way about you know what you're doing like all those sorts of things are totally fair game when it comes to humiliation play if it's your first time trying both medical play and humiliation is certainly something that i think requires finesse because humiliation in general is just really difficult anything playing with emotions or like our mental well-being can be quite difficult so i would recommend you know definitely going slow there especially if humiliation is the direction you want to go with this but it's completely possible i think it is something that's quite easy because all you need to be able to do is like communicate with your partner effectively and if you can do that you have enough tools available to you to start to do a medical play humiliation scene normally at this point in the video what i would do is go over some more like specific types of play and i would go into like safety disclaimers and risk and everything else that you need to know but again the problem with medical play is how vast it is there are so many options when it comes to medical play it's really hard for me to give a broad overview encompassing all of the risks for all sorts of different types of medical play simply because there are so many different possibilities so what i would emphasize here is the importance of affirmative consent that can be revoked at any time really practicing your negotiation skills checking in with your partner if you're doing something more complicated going through practice runs with them first kind of individually doing elements that are going to build into one larger scene and then just taking it slowly you know if this is something you're really excited about i understand wanting to make like a crazy really complicated scene right away because that sounds really fun and fulfilling but you can also work up to that and that will ultimately make that really big important scene a lot more satisfying for you now i also want to acknowledge that medical play is something that quite easily goes into edge play territory that is why i haven't really so much touched on the skill side of doing medical play because i don't have the personal experience there as the top to even begin to attempt to give that advice and so i don't feel like i can really talk about it but i do want to acknowledge that there are many aspects of medical play that do go into edge territory so things again like catheters enemas uh, braces, dental work, uh, anesthesia, consensual drugging, stapling, sutures, acupuncture. There is so much that goes into medical play potentially that I think if any of those areas in particular interest you, like if you really, really want to learn how to sew somebody's mouth shut, the way you're going to learn that is not through a YouTube video. It's going to be through doing your own research, meeting people in person who already have that skill set, learning, observing, trial and error practicing and then eventually building up to the point where you can't actually do it in a scene but it requires a lot of dedication and research and practice and it's not going to be something typically you will fully understand just by watching somebody else do it online or listening to somebody else talk about it online so that's kind of my little spiel there i just want to recognize that medical play can be very complicated it comes on a wide spectrum of experiences from like very simplistic role play to like extremely complicated highly risky edge play so i just want to acknowledge it. i just want to say it and there you go that's the disclaimer i really really encourage you if you want to learn more about this please do your own research find people in your local community go to conventions go to classes go to places where you can actually learn and observe those specific things being done but like i said this is everything i really wanted to talk about when it comes to medical play this is a 101 video so it is a little bit more of a bare bones sort of overview if there's any particular areas within medical play that you are curious about feel free to let me know down in the comment section below if there's anything that i missed that you think is a really key part of medical play also let me know because again there are so many options i am sure there are things i have not even thought of yet and so you know help us out in the comment section leave your ideas and suggestions down below if you like this if you haven't already please do subscribe i make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and bdsm related subjects if you really enjoyed this if you want to support my channel the best way you can do that is through patreon that's what makes all of this possible and then it also allows me to offer you guys additional rewards and perks so there are photo shoots there's a discord chat bonus videos things that i can't talk about on youtube so if that interests you please check it out if you already have if you support me over there thank you so so much it means the absolute world to me and until i see you guys next time i hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week Bye bye